Welcome to Raw Down. We're back in it. March 27th, 2006. This episode was fantastic. Don't listen to these haters. Don't listen to these haters. Mr. McMahon's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. I have some words about Vince McMahon, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Well, we get to see the sausage man himself open the show. Cuts right to him. He says, hi, I'm Vincent Kennedy McMahon. We'll fight John Cena. Chairman versus champ. Chairman. Also, Triple H will fight Shawn Michaels on the highway to hell. And we're like, oh, sick. Did you like Did you like Sausage Man? Any, Everyone likes Sausage anybody, Man. Anybody? Anybody? Hello? I heard a lot of boos coming from the crowd, so. Yeah. Well, that was tonight's cold open, but now we can do a hot open. Say hi to Martin. Yo, Ty's got a penis inspection. This show sucked. Let's hey! hey, hey. <laughs> Alright, so Mick that? Foley comes out extremely wet. That's right. <laughs> two very long gift boxes that he has wrapped up. And he leaves one at the top of the ramp. And he comes into the ring. Says, listen, I shouldn't have done Lita like that. I shouldn't have given her the mandible claw. I got these roses for her. And he proceeds to stand for this, I think, 12-minute segment just with a bouquet of roses for most of it. So I just want that visual in everybody's mind as they're listening here that McFoley is holding a bunch of roses. Mm -hmm. But he says, hey, Edge, I've got a gift for you at the top of the ramp. If you don't come out, you're a fucking pussy and I hate you. So he stands there menacingly with the flowers till Edge's music hits. Edge is like, I won't be caught off guard again, Mick. What if this is a trap? It was like, you can use this at Mania. And then Edge says, you're old. I'll fucking kill you. You can't fight me anymore. And I would be in the main event of Mania if it wasn't for you. Mick says, Ed, don't do this for money. I want my defining WrestleMania moment. Which is definitely something Mick Foley would have said and not some shit that Vince thought sounded good in a script. But anyway, we then get actual Mick Foley talking where he talks about how he wants to make Edge bleed and beg for mercy, and he wants to hear children in the crowd screaming as they are scarred forever as a result of what they've seen. And uh, Mick shows off his ear that got torn off when he got caught up in the ropes in, I think, Japan in, like, the 90s. Like, this is what I give for the business. Now open your fucking present. And Edge slowly does it as if he thinks there's, I guess, a bomb or something in it. (laughs) I don't know. And he pulls out a baseball bat. Grabs yeah, he got the scooter his... bat, dude. It was so yeah. exciting. <laughs> it, it, well, it's not long enough to be the scooter bat. True. <laughs> it's not seven feet long. <laughs> but he calls Mick an arrogant <laughs> son of a bitch and comes down to the ring to beat him up with it. Uh, Mick Foley opens his gift box that he has, pulls out a barbed wire bat. Uh, they smack their bats together. Edge drops his because it hurts his hands. And uh, Mick Foley chases him away. And then... For some reason here, we cut to a trailer about Mick Foley. That was so which, bizarre. It was like, yeah, it cut so fast. <laughs> yeah, there are a few of the. It's like the thing. You'd show this before a match or like as an interstitial during the show, which they did a few times. But they end a segment, show this trailer about basically everything Mick talked about that you just saw, but in black and white and how he's cool and dangerous. And then they cut back to him at ringside. The announcer are like, wow, that was crazy. And then the segment ends. So I don't know why that's there. But Mick Foley yelling about how he wants children to be disturbed by what he does to Edge is probably the best thing that happens on this show. I uh, I also very liked that uh, he said he wants a defining WrestleMania moment, even though he did main event on WrestleMania. So he said that shit sucked, man. Well, yeah, he, he's right. <laughs> he's correct. That shit did suck. A McMahon in every corner and a McMahon in every uh, main event segment is what we're going to get from now, now till hell. I got yeah. a text from Dave saying, when does this get good? Yeah. And uh, I just want <laughs> to ask yeah. uh, Martin, when does it get good? <laughs> uh, Raw? Yeah. Well, I don't watch this shit anymore. Uh, people like it now. In 2023. So, got about 17 years. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so once we hit, let's see what pace are we on now. About 2070, we'll probably be talking about some episodes of Raw that are okay. Great. 
<laughs> but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get better. This is probably the worst episode of Raw I've ever seen all of, and I watched like twenty fifteen oh, Raw. I think it's funny because I had the opposite effect, but I've been also hating on everything else. So it's just weird. This was so bad. <laughs> Maybe because I was laughing really hard throughout it. I didn't have a bad Dude, time. All right. that makes You make me feel way better. Like, because I was talking to Ty before we started recording, and I was like, Dude, like, I know the, like, the last week I was on, I didn't say a whole lot. It's like, whatever. This was nothing. Like, this... <laughs> This, this was nothing. It's the go home show, an dude. Hour and a half. Oh. oh yeah. Also, important note: this is the fucking show before WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> this is what they're showing you to get you to yeah, buy like... fucking WrestleMania. WWE has a problem where a lot of their go home shows are bad, but this is for fucking WrestleMania. And there's some shit we're gonna talk about later on this show that shouldn't be on heat. But again, Ty has a penis inspection. We got to keep a move on. That's and, right, baby. Uh, now I have to talk again, dear listener, because uh, I have half an hour of uh, Kane, Carlito, Big Show, and Chris <laughs> Masters to talk about. Strap the fuck in. And, yeah, uh-huh. So, oh. Jesus, I, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so I wasn't here last week, so I don't really know why this happens other than Carlito thinks it's a fluke, but he's oh. fighting Kane. Oh, don't worry. They fought last week, too. Yeah, so my first note is why, though. Um, uh, and then uh, Carlito requested this after what the announcer said. Carlito called a fluke L last week. Uh, Carlito gets the jobber entrance, which he deserves. Kane hits his pre-match pyro, and Carlito attacks him daring it. Uh, hits Kane a few times. Kane sits up, no cells. Uh, Carlito puts in a sleeper for a while, as I also fall asleep. Um, I think Kane here represents the viewers of monday night raw because he's constantly rejecting carlito but is being forced to endure him anyway for reasons beyond human comprehension every single week but then they do basically nothing for three minutes uh carlito goes for the flying nothing gets caught in the choke slam and then he pulls the ref into kane's arm uh the ref dqs him and Carlito runs away to the back and Kane chases him. So you got a three minute DQ where nothing happened. That's great. <laughs> but then we cut to the back and Carlito has been cornered up against some kind of storage room by Kane. But then Chris Masters and two creator wrestlers start Wait, beating no, up no, Kane. No, 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 no. That's Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. Those guys okay. were the tag team champions before Kane and Big Show. So they had they have some fight in that. <laughs> They, okay, great. They so, were two angry. <laughs> so yeah, two creative wrestlers start beating up Kane. R.I.P. And that's uh, Kane. They, they open the door, uh, throw him into the storage room, and Chris Masters gets in in his wrestling gear, by the way, in a forklift that's there, drives it about three feet, and parks it in front of the door. And then Big Show comes in, uh, beats everybody up, yells through the door that there's a forklift in front of it. And he tries to push it away. We cut back to commentary. Chris Masters' music hits. And Carlito and Chris Masters are out there now. We cut back to backstage again. And Big Show has almost pushed the forklift out of the way. And Kane just comes wandering around <laughs> from the corner. And he's like, Big Show's like, what, what, how? And Kane's like, yeah, there's another door back there. They're stupid. And they're like, let's go beat up Chris Masters. And they go, okay. We so Jerry Lawler calls Carlito and Chris Masters, and I quote, "mental midgets." I, that was my one note I put down. I just yelled about them being mental midgets. I um, this is the first time. Oh, Jesus <laughs> this Christ. is the first time. Emerald's gonna fall on the floor. We're never gonna. We're never gonna get that right. Nah, kill him. Fuck him. Beep. <laughs> Keep done, idiot. Uh, uh, this is the first time since we started the show that Big Show and Kane have had any interaction outside of <laughs> showing up together in the yeah. ring sometimes. Fuck, you're right. And yeah, where Big Show cares about anything that happens to Kane. Yes. Yeah. It was it was a nice moment because they're just like, hey, I, I protected you, big guy. And he's like, yeah, thanks, man. And he's like, let's go kill these guys. And he's like, okay. I'm like, cool. Big Show, by the way, <laughs> did succeed in basically getting the forklift. That was that was way. pretty crazy. Yeah, I, yeah. impressive awesome. feat of strength by by him. 
I'm very impressed. Also, Chris Masters is not fucking forklift certified. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have gotten on that. Should not have gotten on That's that. That's an OSHA violation. Yeah, it was absolutely. And I should know. But, so now we come back to Chris Masters, who has a terrible hairline at 23 years old. Don't do <laughs> steroids, kids. I mean, everybody on Raw is natty. Smack up those steroids. But, uh... So he's on the mic, and he says nobody can escape the master lock, not even the big show. And then the big Kane oh. comes out. Uh, Kane chases Carlito away to the back and then just wanders back to ringside. Don't think shows up on camera again. Uh, somebody has a sign that says, I heart mullets. Uh, so the master lock challenge is now starting. Uh, big show sits down in the folding chair. They provide everybody to sit in the middle of the ring and goes to allow Chris Masters to put the lock in. He looks kind of nervous, but he puts his hands up. He's much nicer about this than John Cena was, who was very nervous about this thing he agreed to for some reason. But Chris Masters comes behind him, cinches one arm in, and then because Big Show too big with his big stupid shirt uh, cannot get his arm around the Big Show, and Big Show now looks smug. Chris Masters looks upset, uh, wanders to the corner, grabs a mic, and yells that Big Show is too greased up and he needs to be wiped down. Uh, The ref goes and gets Big Show a towel, who dabs himself (laughs) off. Uh, Chris Masters, again for a few minutes, tries to get both of his hands to link, but Big Show is just too big and he can't. Big Show is cheating. Yes. By being huge. Big Show is allowing all of this. And then Chris Masters just punches Big Show in the back of the head. Uh, They start fighting. Eventually, Chris Masters is choke slammed. Uh, Big Show's music hits. And then Kane comes in excited, uh, does the Kane thing, hits his pyro again, and then Kane's music plays for some reason, though he did nothing in this segment. So there's half an hour of Kane, Big Show, Carlito, and Chris Masters content. It is nice that we had some Big Show and Kane interaction, I guess, but... Jesus Christ, Carlito cannot do anything. I don't know why he gets paid. Nope. Well, I'm not a huge fan of Big Show or Kane, but these are our tag team champions. These are the people that we have to care about. Like saying, these are the guys that these are the best tag team in the company. And they finally get some fucking character development. Thank fucking Christ. Right before yeah. Mania. <laughs> they're like, ah, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, but also it's two fucking comedy it's, bits right before WrestleMania. It's, it's, it's Kane gets locked in a room that has a door nobody else noticed. And uh, Big Show is too fat and greasy to get your arms around. All I, I didn't say it was good. <laughs> one of the commentators was like, oh, maybe if Chris Masters got an arm extension, he'd be able to do it or something like that. It was stupid. Oh, yeah, they, they yell about how the masterpiece doesn't have 10-foot arms. So he, <laughs> yeah, can't, <laughs> he can't put the big show in the master lock. Yeah, the commentators were ass also. <laughs> Dude, like... <laughs> I hate Coach so much. <laughs> <laughs> that man Thank never you. shuts the fuck up. Yes, when Coach came back in, like, 2015, I immediately hated him. And everyone's like, oh, come on, man. And then eventually agreed I was right. Yeah, like, so, like... Fuck, he sucks. You know... I got you, Martin. Thank like, you. I, like, I've heard so much shit, like, on both sides of the fence about the coach. And then just every episode I watch, I now under Like, he's terrible. <laughs> He has he has less important shit to say than me, and he's getting paid for this. He is uh-huh. worthless. Yes, he's, he he's does. He's the boss's biggest uh, ass kisser. Like he does oh. nothing. He makes <laughs> Joey Styles look competent. Jerry fucking Lawler, that pedophile, racist, old homophobic <laughs> old man, is by. Far the best commentator. It's not even close. Show. Not um, a when, contest. When does Corey Graves break his neck and get to do start doing commentary? We got like ten years. We got about 10, no! 15 years. I, I we need anyone else who isn't the coach. We we got spoiled by JR showing up at Saturday night's main event. Maybe he'll come oh, back soon. We really <laughs> did. Yeah, Jim Ross still barely functional in two thousand six. Not his fault. A lot of bad <laughs> things happened to Jim Ross, but just my God, him and Taz and Jerry Lawler on commentary for that show was an oasis in the desert. It, yeah, the, you, that's putting it perfectly, I think. Dude, anyway, I, it's a big time. 
Big time. Well, before Michelle that, Williams of Destiny Child is here to perform America yes, the Beautiful. Yes, on Sunday. Yeah. Coach tells us that, too. He's so excited. He loves Destiny's Child, he says. You said before that? Oh, Because I have to yell about that, too. Before what? My bad. I oh, I, you said before, before big time. Listen, I'm just going to say, after the big time promo, before the next match or whatever, there was a Snickers ad. Oh, Look, tell me I'm about a it. mark for commercials and stuff. I, is this... Right, their tagline was Snickers. It's only satisfying if you eat it. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck is that? Yeah, that's yeah, like... that is their old motto. What? <laughs> I, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't no, it doesn't. Mean... That's why they changed it. <laughs> like I might have missed that like several times. Like, but it really rung. It really resonated with me, and I was like, huh. Well, on USA so, Network, they couldn't run their uh, yeah, slogan of Snickers. Exactly. It's also satisfying if you put it up your ass. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yeah, apparently that's just a, a bit they used to have, because I just found a, an old one with a, a deer hunting. It's only satisfying if you eat it. Sure, man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Does what? anybody want to talk about this John Cena propaganda? Uh. Yeah, we'll get into that in just a second. Real quick, though, we got we got Trish and Tori tonight versus Candice and uh, Victoria. We got Shawn Michaels fighting Triple H, Got and then we got the Cena versus McMahon. And they actually showed really cool uh, vignette, like not the vignettes, what the hell, match card. Like, they don't have shitty JPEGs anymore. They show, like, the little, uh, was it, video going into the pose. And finally, they have good match cards. It took them four months. But right after that, we get the John Cena uh, in the gym. He's pumping iron. He's getting off all over the fucking barbells, man. This is incel Cena at his greatest. He says, women, get the fuck out. I'm pumping iron. I got creatine flowing through my veins. Uh, John Cena's old, like, gym guy <laughs> kept telling us about how John Cena has a match determination that he cannot be beat or bested. Uh, he's really just giving him the anime character, uh, pump up, really, yeah, that's for right. five minutes. And it, yeah, it was, yeah, uh, wild. Yeah. Cena really hitting the Boston accent for this Yeah! Video. And also, his gym didn't have heat or air conditioning. Yep. Nope. That's right. He said, "If you're if you're in the the cold, it's gonna be freezing in there, but I won't be freezing because I'll be hitting the gym, <laughs> hitting that pump." All right, man. Fair enough. He's like, "I'll be." Yeah. I used to puke all over the floor whenever I'd be done with my my workouts. Yeah, he's Saitama, but but not. Is that a is that a quote? Can I put that up on screen? Yeah, sure. He's like Saitama, but not. <laughs> we got another Hall of Fame induction. We got Tony Atlas. Hello. Yeah, Tony Atlas seems cool. Yeah, based on what they showed about him, he seemed cool. Yeah, he has a funny little laugh too. He goes, ah ha ha ha, ah ha ha, ah ha ha. Yeah, he was like a big bodybuilder who was like, I'm gonna go be a wrestler, and then he was one of the first african-american tag team tag team champions with the, like he just seemed cool yeah i don't know he was tag team Former champs with Mr. the rock's USA. dad rocky johnson yeah uh he was also present in the area when bruiser brody got killed which is nuts oh. so like oh, did that's Tony like a it? whole no he didn't do it he was like really good friends with bruiser brody so like oh, i think ah. he tried to stop it happening and they just like made him leave Mm. Yeah, it's on. It's on Vice. Go watch Dark Side of the Ring about Bruiser Brody. Tony Ellis gets really, really sad about it, but it's a really good segment. He's definitely deserving in there. Got to have um, you know, the one of the first African American champions, tag team yeah, champions definitely. in there. Um, he's gonna be inducted by SD Jones, who was the like one of the first people at Mania. I think Mania two. Not sure. Uh, but yeah. Good, good, good choice. Who the hell are these people? Yeah, I. Hey, no, cut that. It's gonna be cut. Don't worry. I just can't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who any anybody is in the Hall of Fame. I don't care about those segments really. Wow, got put some hey, respect man. on it. I'm here for the fighting. 
Well, show me the fighting. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you see, oh, you see fighting because the axe body spray slam of the night <laughs> is up next. Mother, it's, how old is axe body spray? Jesus Christ! I did not it's just realize a big, it was. Yeah, it's just a big fuck off brawl between Sean, Hunter, Shane, and Vince. I think last week or something. I don't really know, but there are notably no actual slams in the slam of the night for like the seventh week in a row. And I'm not fucking talking about this next thing. Somebody else take this. This was dog shit. Oh, you didn't like it's time to play the game? Versus Sean Michael. <sighs> so, obviously, look, I don't, I don't have to play by play right now, all right? But look, Triple H comes out. His theme song is always great. It's awesome. It's goaded. Whatever. It was on this moment that I learned that I really hate Shawn Michaels' theme song and that it's not good. <laughs> you don't comparison. find him cute or find him sexy? No. What the hell, dude? He's the sexy boy. <laughs> he's, he's not a boy toy. <laughs> boy he's toy! Sexy... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, get, I got it. Um, and then they just did some really just default fighting. I guess is the best way to put it. Like... <laughs> Fighting there you was, see at the loading screen. Yeah, like there was nothing spectacular or like flashy, uh, except for uh, Triple H like threw him uh, like across the ring and then like grabbed him by his hair and slammed him to the ground like a cave. And like that was cool. But I don't know. Was this to set up their beef for Mania? It was like. Well, because Cena and McMahon are fighting, right. they had had the other people in the feud fight each other, even though they used to have a feud back in the day. So there's well, a little bit of animosity there, but... They didn't need to. Yeah, I was going to say, like, these these two haven't had, like, strict beef, really? And then this match was just kind of, like, shoehorned in, and then well, I mean, kind of went nowhere. Sean got bullied last week because... Uh, I, it was You're Triple H and right. Shane versus Sean and Cena, and then Cena got uh, kicked out for close fisting somebody. You're right. That's uh, oh, how many times did Coach talk about uh, Omaha during the night? I he kept he kept bringing up that's a that's night. a Nebraska hit right there by Triple H. Oh, the Omaha crowd loves this beefy match. I'm like, what? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or is Omaha Beef like their newest biggest sponsor? Or they were just in Omaha today. I just, you know, I wasn't sure if like they got paid extra because they were in Omaha or what. But yeah, he really, he was really just selling it. Yeah, and that was that was it. Um, essentially, Mister Man comes out to the ring. We cut the break. He comes back. Triple H is a huge spine buster on Sean. Uh, Triple H also just like hits his knee on him. Nothing too crazy in this match, other than just uh, a bunch of moves that don't really mean anything. I and mean, Shawn uh, Michaels did throw Triple H into Vince because Vince. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So he goes for the uh, the pedigree. He counters it. He does the oh, the fuck they call it. Is it the monkey flip. That's what they call it. I I think that's what they call it. I feel like I was about to say it, and then my brain said that's that's wrong. I don't. It's I, definitely no, I, the monkey I, flip. Monkey flips him into Vince, and Vince just kind of collapses. <laughs> very funnily. Heavy. That's a new word. Yeah. Then Sean tries to go for his elbow drop, hits that, hits. His, he's tuning up the band, and Vince comes out of nowhere, grabs Sean's leg. Sean puts him up on the apron, and then uh, hits fucking McMahon out. He's cleaned out. He's cold, out cold, and then Triple H says pedigree, and it's over. Well, the because hold on. Triple H. The oh end. no, no, that's right. Because Triple H told Vince to get in the ring, and then they just started bullying him. Yeah. So and they just no. throw it out Shawn instead of a Michaels DQ. Was, Shawn Michaels was passed out on the ring. Vince got, comes in, uh, is holding Shawn Michaels down, and tells Triple H to get the thing. Triple H goes underneath the fucking ring, grabs a sledgehammer, and's about to go to fucking hit uh, Shawn Michaels. And John Cena rushes in, hops into the ring, and stops the whole thing. And then John Cena uh, gets a few hits on Triple H, throws him out of the ring, and they all run. 
Oh, yeah, because Triple H is like, I'm done with the hammer. I won't kill you, Cena. I want this to be clean. Even though he was, uh, later on in the show, spoiler, yeah. he did not give a fuck about using that damn hammer, so I don't know why he wanted to be clean here. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that hammer's not legal. I don't know why that's there. Get that out of here. That's, that's the, the thing. <laughs> that's the equalizer, dude. Yeah, great equalizer. Big hammer. <laughs> Uh, the crowd was nuts today, though. Compared to last week, whew, they were hot for everything. Maybe that's why I had a yeah, good time. Maybe that's why I had a good time, because I could feel the crowd's energy. Because the crowd was hype? Because last, be, last week, I mean, Emerald was here. How often was like, man, this was good, but I just felt sad. <laughs> cause nobody... Oh, yeah, no, last week, the crowd was just sad. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm really glad I missed last week. Unfortunately, I was out of state. Man. Good thing uh, I didn't get to watch the sad crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a, a triple I, threat match really well made and done, but the crowd gave no shit about it. And so they just said, fuck you, you're going to get the Spirit Squad this week. Dude. Uh, yeah, they showed up, and it was a nothing match with Spirit oh, Squad. I don't God. even know who the fuck they were fighting. I was like, I'm not paying attention to these fucking NSYNC rejects again. I don't know who they're fighting. None of these people oh. are important to me. Can I want Martin because you somehow have the most verbosity for even the most like just garbage of things. Can you please <laughs> explain to me why Val Venus, Eugene, and Viscera were on a team against the Spirit Squad? Yeah. So here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meant, um, uh, cognitive disability is funny. Uh, <laughs> Viscera is fat, and uh, Val Venus uh, should die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's. Well, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I like what was any of that? Well, oh. we'll shoot the hip because we got we got a promo before that match. Oh, thank you. Because yeah, woo. We'll get to Rick in a sec, because Vince is on screen, and he says, Hey, Triple H is going to be in my corner tonight, and Sean, you'll be in Cena's. And that was on, on WWE.com Unlimited, so good luck finding that if you really want to watch the full bit. I don't know if there's more to it. Um, they show off the money in the bank above the ring, and Ric Flair is here, baby! Woo! The first time I competed Woo! at WrestleMania was at WrestleMania 8, and I lost my championship, and you guys thought that was my last title run. Are you kidding me? Woo! Wings! He's promoting his uh, his wing company 20 years before it started. Isn't that crazy? Wild. How do you know? Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> but you really thought he wouldn't be champion 16 times? Are you, woo! I'm going to win it 17 times. And then uh, Sheldon comes out and he goes, Hey, I'm sick of this propaganda. <laughs> it's time for a reality check, Pops. Even though on SmackDown, we're queuing up for a real reality check. Sorry. Sorry, Martin. We got a real reality check queuing up. Hello. <laughs> Hello, down there. Martin. I'm just letting that bit die. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, okay, we can't find him. <laughs> it's that. He was born with more athletic ability than anyone in this match combined. And that goes double for you, old man. Check two. You should be the last person concerned with winning this match, because you know that you know, just like everybody else knows, it's not going to happen. And check three. Why don't you play close attention to this one? WrestleMania is my night. So you take your 16 world titles and shove them where the sun don't shine. I miss I miss Mama Benjamin. <laughs> I miss her so much. We all do. Yeah. Uh, they just start going to town on each other. Flair's chopping away. Sheldon reverses the Irish whip and hit a Samoan drop, which looked really weird because Sheldon put him up in the air and then kind of like lightly put him down. Didn't want to hurt Rick there. Uh, yeah. At this point, somebody has a sign that says the champ is queer, by the way. <laughs> well, of course. So you, can, so you can add it to the all-queer chain gang sign from a few weeks ago. That's right, baby. RVD is here. I don't know. Why was Sheldon on the ladder? Because everybody's got to climb it. And... 
Yeah, they're dealing with the letter match or the money in the bank, but not. I, uh, he pulls. He was going to jump onto Ric Flair. I don't know. Yeah. But he was up there, kind of. Yeah, so RVD pulls Sheldon off. That looked fucking disgusting. Even worse, he throws him onto the ladder itself and then crushes him with a rolling thunder. And oh my God, like. Sheldon did not need to be taking a bump like that six days before Mania. RVD hops on the mic. He says, you need to realize something, and you need to realize this Sunday WrestleMania, it's every man for himself, and the money in the bank belongs to this man. And then he saunters over to Rick, and he goes, rah, and then as he says, he gets poked in the eye. Ah. Hmm. Flair picks up the ladder and just slowly charges at him. And just killed RVD. <laughs> I laughed so fucking hard. Dude, yeah. It's Rick, Rick running with the letter going, ah! And was, was like, oh shit, I can't move. <laughs> he couldn't see. Oh yeah, true. And he kept yelling about how he's going to pop his eye because he did it once, he'll do it again. He's sweating. I'm and sorry, I'm... everybody at home. This is this was a, this was a tough week. No, we got, we got the spirit <laughs> squads here to save our lives. Yeah, and then the spirit right. squad showed up to fight a fat guy, a Hold on. mentally handicapped guy, and Valvino. We got, we got Johnny, well, Kenny, okay, and Mikey. I'd, I'd, <laughs> listen, I'd argue there's two mentally handicapped people in this match. One of them actually, but yeah, well, is it Val Penis? Yeah, of course, it's Val Penis. <laughs> Hello, Filipinos. <laughs> Still can't believe that segment is real. Yeah. Like okay, I I'll just I'll just fucking take this one because <laughs> my me. god, okay. Thanks. So Johnny Kenny and Mikey are representing the Spirit Squad here. Uh, Kenny seems to be the one they think is going to be anything, and nobody in the Spirit Squad ever becomes any good. But like <laughs> Kenny, <seems laughs> <at all>. um, <laughs> real quick, why oh. the fuck is Mitch like the big cuck of the group? They will never allow that man to wrestle. He just got to sit there and watch. <laughs> Yeah, so I, Mitch. Maybe Mitch is like the son of somebody in production. They're we, just having him there to like keep that guy happy. I don't know. I'm gonna start yeah, a petition. A I'm gonna start a petition. Start Mitch wrestling. I want Mitch one on one matches. I don't want heat. But I want raw. You could, you could probably give Mitch ten dollars and he'd give you a cameo or just tell you or something. I'm gonna I hit him know. up. I'm gonna hit him up and get him on the pod. Yeah. So we got Johnny, Kenny, and Mikey versus uh, Val Penis, Viscera, and Eugene. <laughs> uh, we've got Mikey and Viscera starting off what I will charitably call a match. Uh, Mikey shucks and jives for a little bit, and then Viscera just punches him. Uh, Jerry Lawler calls the Spirit Squad the village people of the WWE. Get it? <laughs> gay of 7,000 uh, gay jokes that get made in this match. Funny, because... Men being gay is funny and bad. Thank you. Anyway, uh, Viscera does the hump thing he does. Johnny jumps on his back. Uh, at some point, Eugene comes in and rides Mikey around like a pony, and then Kenny punches Eugene in the head. Johnny hits a Michael Jackson pose and then also punches so Eugene weird. in the head. <laughs> Coach says something, and then Joey fucking Styles of all people, says, man, I can't believe I let you talk just so you could say that. So, you know it was terrible. <laughs> Even Joey Styles is like, why did I let you say anything? It was why do I even a heinous fucking thing. Also, there's a sign that says, hi, Ty. Hey. So, Ty has clearly hey. traveled through time and space. Uh, we get a hot tag to Val Penis, everybody. Woo! Uh, who cleans house, and then, uh, I don't, I wrote down Mikey, but I don't know which of these crazy white boys did it. Uh, jumps off the trampoline the spirit oh, squad that was having Mikey. the outside. Uh, hits Val Penis in the dick. He falls off, and then whatever one is legal pins them, and the spirit squad win. <clears throat> uh, minus seven stars for this match. After it, the spirit squad returned to beat everyone up, but mostly Eugene. Uh, Val Penis has apparently hurt his elbow and shoulder or something. And four of them just grab a limb, and then one of them uh, does a leg drop off the top rope onto Val Penis's hurt arm. So hope he's not, unfortunately, dead forever, but maybe he'll stop showing up on the show and stay on heat or whatever. Uh, and then the Spirit Squad go up on the stage, do their routine, 
and they inf- say, uh, it's the champ versus the chairman, John Cena, get ready to fight. Your time ain't now, your time is through, we all say F you. That's right. That's the segment. Mock John Cena's You Can't See Me. Yes. Listen, man, those trampoline bits were really good. I really liked them. Mikey got some hang time on that and just killed Valpina, so that's a po- net positive for all of us. And then Kenny hitting that disgusting leg drop onto his shoulders, even bigger net positive. So we're, we're in the money here. Man, poor Val Penis. They broke his Val No, that's penis. fine. No, that's fine. Listen, <laughs> no, not poor Val Penis. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Never say that again. <laughs> Val so, Penis deserves every terrible thing that happens to Val Penis. Yeah, so I don't know all the details about Val Penis. Can we really quick... Why is he such a villain in in real life? What's What did he do bad? His CTE really affects his Twitter presence ah i i understand <laughs> yeah that i mean do you have anything else to interject on that uh, part is that uh, very... uh, his his favorite letter is between p and r so <laughs> there oh that's right <laughs> anyway uh <laughs> triple h propaganda triple h is hanging out with some italian man who's He's only brazilian is that brazilian he says he went to Brazil to find this guy because he's the best. He found the he only does. man, Italian man in Brazil, speaking, yeah, which, <laughs> speaking Portuguese. I'm, yeah, which I'm pretty. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> run that again. He's the only... <laughs> well, on, yeah, he's in Brazil, right? He's speaking Portuguese. No, he's the only Italian, Italian man, man in, in Brazil, Brazil speak... <laughs> speaks Portuguese. <laughs> Portuguese. All right, cool. Put that. I just wanted to get oh, that sure. sentence. Out Let's of get... the ether without me stepping <laughs> on it. But yeah, he's the best Italian Portuguese at what he does, which isn't just being able to buy steroids, I swear. Uh, yeah, Triple H says I'm the best at wrestling. I, you know. Well, it makes little sense because the guy is speaking in you know a different language. So wh- how uh-huh. does Triple H understand what he's saying? Does he understand what he's saying? Or is he just lifting know. weights next to him? As he's trying to yeah, coach he knows, him. Yeah, Triple H also knows Italian Portuguese. Sweet. <laughs> Would you say it's Italian geese? No. Who? <laughs> Who? Emerald, would you say it's Italian geese? <laughs> You're right. You're right. What I'm the sorry. fuck does that even mean? What does <laughs> that, mean? that mean? That's what Ty said, and that's what stayed in the episode because we had to cut out. <laughs> no, I know, but, but, like, but like... It's a mixture of both. Know. It's a portmanteau. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh I see, oh, I see. Um, I, I don't fucking know, man. Big time. Big time. Well, not, no, that's after the refrigerator Perry propaganda. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with what's wrong with the fridge, dude? I didn't say anything wrong with it. I just said it went before big time. We yeah, you're right. To, welcome welcome we have to, to the Hall of Fame. Peter Gabriel happy. Uh, he'll yeah, be... They talk about Refrigerator Perry being in a battle royal at WrestleMania for like five minutes. Yeah, it was cool. And John Cena's inducting him into the Celebrity Hall of Fame. I don't know why. Hey, man, but that... anyway, big time. Big time. Big time. Big, big time. time. Big time. We got a lot of matches for Mania. They're, it's so big that they have to make it four hours. I wish Mania was only four hours. Yeah, Angry so Joe. Nice. Angry Joe will be pissed to hear this. I'm gonna I'm let that one go. All right, first Angry Joe mentioned since I think 2015. <laughs> Four hours. Angry Joe, the angriest Italian, Brazilian, Portuguese, El Paso man. Oh. <laughs> Got it in Damn. one. I'm from El Paso, Texas, Japan. El Paso. Is that true? Right. <laughs> Ryder Rabbit told me. Who? Big Iron? That's right. Oh my god. <laughs> On his hip? Okay, so let's let's go through this. Let's break down this uh, <laughs> WrestleMania all, card. We're trying to get away from this this raw at all. We got Undertaker versus Mark Henry in a casket match. We got Candice right. Michelle versus Tori Wilson in a Playboy pillow fight. Got the sure. Money in the Bank ladder match. Chris okay. Benoit versus JBL in a U.S. title match. 
Nah. Trish Stratus versus Mickey James in the women's title match. We got Mick Foley Emerald. versus Edge in the hardcore match. Hold on. Emerald. Uh, JBL uh, or Chris Benoit, who do you want to win? <laughs> I I recognize the name of Chris Benoit. Okay. I'm going to go JBL. All right. <laughs> you were either getting a vine boom or a bra, and you got the vine boom. <laughs> Mick Foley versus vine Edge in the hardcore boom. match. Got the Kane and Big Show versus Chris Masters and Carlito for the World Tag Team title. That's going to be the match of the night. Booker T and Shermel in a handicap match versus Boogeyman. Kurt Angle versus Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio in a world title match. Shawn Michaels versus Vince McMahon in a no-holds-barred match. And then the main event, John Cena versus Triple H for the WWE Championship. I'm going to have uh, – we're going to have a big time. I, I'm excited for Mania because something will happen. We we cut to Mickey James in her women's uh, cave full of pictures of Trish. And uh, wow. Wow. I couldn't. I could. <laughs> she says, Trish, I have admired you for so long, but now this Sunday at WrestleMania, my obsession is not only going to be to beat you and become the new women's champion. No, my obsession is your. <laughs> rips up a picture. Destruction. And then it just cuts she the Trish it. watch. <laughs> yeah, she rips it so slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. That was cool how they had, like, a little setup for that, though. Like, when the fuck yeah. do we have special shit like that? Yeah, the candles and the pictures, all Trish all over in her murder yeah. room. Yeah, that was cool. That that was genuinely cool. Uh, Trish then, is... Yeah, Trish is watching backstage, <laughs> and she looks like, what the fuck, I'm gonna die. And then Tori with the tattoo dog comes in and is like, hey, you good? We got a match. And Trish is like, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, big time. I thought that was Paris Hilton. Nope. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a tag team match. Uh Trish Stratus and Tori Wilson versus Candace and Victoria. Uh I wish we had our, our lovable man who talks about this shit on the show, but he's not here today. Where the fuck is he? Is he still in the hole from episode what, seven, six? He's in Italy, Portugal. Leave him alone. Oh, come yeah. on, man. Uh, shit, does anybody... Emerald, you gotta do it. Do I? <laughs> yes. I didn't really pay attention to it. God damn oh, it. I kept... I kept... My brain kept uh, becoming fuzz when uh, the commentators kept uh, being weird perverts talking about them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain, so, uh... My brain keeps shutting down because I actually respect women. Joey, Joey Styles called... Uh, Coach and, uh, I was going to say, I'm like, I was about to say Taz, because I've been watching Smack Up too much, but Jerry Lawler, he calls them both Pavlovian commentators, because uh, he knows that they're going to say uh, disgusting shit about the women. And I was like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Styles. Uh, really cool moves by, uh, once you get Trish in the match, the match becomes a lot better, because Trish is hitting uh, the fucking spinning hurricane rana she just kills her with a fucking kick who else was i mean candace did nothing i don't care fuck fuck candace in this match she Bro, sucks the whirly bird eh. true she did do the whirly bird uh trish wins with the uh fucking satisfaction and it's over in three minutes yeah, I have noticed that the women's matches are not long, and it is unfortunate. I mean, to be fair, this match went longer than ninety percent of the show. It was longer than the main event. True. It was longer yeah. than Kane versus Carlito, but it was ten seconds shorter than the Spirit Squad versus Valpina. Was this longer than Kane versus Carlito? I feel like Kane versus Carlito went on forever. The actual match wasn't long. It was two minutes was and 53 like, seconds. It was just all the bits and garbage? Yes. It was like okay. four segments in a row. That They were like the first half hour of the show after the yeah, I knew that was. Yeah. Good old bits and garbage. It's our favorite. So yeah, the match was not the worst. And I feel like people don't, don't really like the women's matches around this time. But I feel like Trish in there with Victoria. Always going to be good. 
unfortunate having Candace and Tori in there, though. You know what? Like, I think you raise a good point. Is because, like, back from when I, uh, you know, we would watch wrestling and stuff regularly with current content, like, a year and a half ago or so. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like, although this is also just, like, boring slop and the commentators don't know what to do, uh, at least the, like, story of what the women's, like, division is doing like they have character story they have a reason for being there that as opposed to like modern day has just been like uh i don't like charlotte because she's rude uh and also like i don't know i feel like the women's storyline back at this time is at least something even if the match isn't exciting at least at if something is kind of happening uh and <laughs> Yeah, it's so, really unfortunate that they kind of killed off the storyline because uh, Mickey went a little too promiscuous at the pay per view. Mm, so I they were, they they kind of just don't want to ever remember this as being a good storyline. Because me and I Martin, see. I remember me and Martin talking about New Year's Revolution. Like one of the best yeah. matches on that show was Mickey and Trish, but Dave no, Meltzer said it was of. negative. It wasn't one of it was, was it? easy the best match. It was a oh, pretty yeah, yeah. good match. Yeah, that was the best match on the show. I forgot because I'm like, oh, Triple H versus Big Show was uh, slop. <laughs> Even though Nico loved it, I miss I miss Nico. Where's Nico at? We all miss Nico. Penis inspection is in eight minutes, so we gotta <laughs> crank oh, yeah, this up here. Go. Let's crank this oh, bad yeah, boy. Crank the penis. Let's go. No chance. <laughs> No we chance. Got, the chairman is here. We Zero got the, tolerance. We got, Thumbs down. We got Mr. Hog in the ring, and he's looking <laughs> mad fucking Mr. Sl- Hog? Have you seen him? <laughs> Look at him. He's pink. <laughs> All right. Aston answered. <laughs> yeah. Pink Vince is here. Uh, Mr. Hog. Here. Yeah, Mr. Hog uh, now out here. Uh, he's like, All right, ref. Here's the thing. Uh, we're gonna handcuff uh, Shawn Michaels and also Triple H to the ring post. So they can't interfere. And Triple H is like, "Wait, what?" And it's like, "Nah, it's cool. I swear." Uh, so they do that. The ref is given the key to the handcuffs on a necklace that he's wearing. Uh, and we just do headlocks and the tests of strength that John Cena takes way too long to power out of against this old man. Uh. Vince starts bleeding from his ear at one point. I legitimately do not know how. I don't know if it was in the headlock, if he rubbed his ear too good. I don't know, but... So his ear starts bleeding. Uh, Whatever. John Cena eventually takes over in every test of strength. Uh, There's a lot of really good Vince faces this segment. Yeah, I'm sure some of them will be in the thumbnail. I really hope so. Some of them are already emojis in our Discord channel. So, uh... Fantastic facial work from Vince here. But, uh, yeah, then he just kicks John Cena in the dick and gets DQ'd after, like, two minutes. Uh, and then he pilfers the key to the handcuffs, releases Triple H. Uh, Triple H grabs the sledgehammer, hits John Cena in the head as Vince pogs. Uh, Sean Hickenbottom is, uh, now surrounded by Vince with the chair and Hunter with the sledgehammer. And much like his, uh, best friend Jesus, he is get the shit beaten out of him. Yeah, then we get the ending shot of Vince and Triple H standing over the bleeding corpses of John Cena and Shawn Michaels as Vince's music plays. It's it's been way too long since we've had a Cena bleeding like a stuffed pig moment. Yeah, John was bleeding a lot. Yeah, he got hit with the hammer. He was bleeding everywhere. Uh, You're talking about like bumps before Mania. Every every show during January, I think Cena bled. <laughs> that was rough. And then yeah, it, I, I, yeah, like I'm. I know it sounds like I'm not talking about a whole lot, but like this main event went what five, minutes. six minutes maybe as a total thing, and the match was like two of it. Yep. I I hated it so much. First off, Vince McMahon strutting out with his usual weird little strut, his body <laughs> looking like a roasted turkey, but his head perfectly dry. It's your hog. Very weird. It's a hog, dude. And <laughs> the. I thought it was going to be a good match. Like, he's losing to Cena in the strength. People are getting riled up. I'm getting riled up. And then he just, then, then they just start to cheat. 
kicks him in the crotch, lets out Triple H, gets the sledgehammer, and it just and then they gang up on poor <sighs> I can't remember his name. I'm so I'm so Sean Michael Hickenbottom. Yeah. Poor Shawn Michaels still chained up like a like a fucking stray dog. And right. they just and they just get at him. I just like I'm I would demand my money back immediately. No, yeah, Omaha was into that. it. Omaha went crazy for all that. Oh no. They were going crazy for Vince McMahon getting his shit kicked in. I heard as soon as he started cheating, <laughs> I did not hear them anymore. Welcome to T V episodes, Emerald. You are in pain. And then you get you get might you might. It's like a five percent chance you'll get happy at the pay per view because they might lose. But most of the time they'll have them win and then you go, ah, can you check the the raw down chat real quick? Oh yeah 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 my bad my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Dear liberals, I'm Val Penis. <laughs> Fuck you, Val Penis. <laughs> you guys ready for Mania next week? We got six days. Six days till Mania. Come on, guys. No. Oh come on. Yeah. Oh, Peter Gabriel will be pissed to hear that. This is big, big time. time. Girl, want to be associated with this the shit show come on this was like at least top, top five, five. Dido, do. big time i'm I, i'm so glad like i said to hear that martin you also think that this is one of the worst dog episodes shit. of anything yeah just horrible absolute garbage again especially for your show before wrestlemania mm-hmm yeah, yeah, it's really I, inexcusable. I will, I will give my props to to Mick Foley at the beginning, uh, whipping out the counter barbed wire bat and scaring the piss out of Edge. I'm rooting for my boy. I like yeah, Mick Foley. I mean, Mick Foley was fine. He did Mick Foley things. Just yeah. See, I had I had the opposite effect because I feel like, you know, Foley getting one up on Edge before the before the pay per view. You got the tag team champions actually, you know, coexisting and and being a team for once. And then, you know, Carlito and Chris Masters trying to do something team-like because they've been uh, dogging on each other for the past month, hating each other because of the Elimination Chamber. So they finally are on the same page. You got uh, Triple H and Sean furthering the storylines of both Cena and McMahon separately going into the main event. You got the money in the bank getting talked about. The only thing that really didn't matter was the Spirit Squad and Valpinas. Yeah, Ty's easily impressed by a shiny object. It's uh, true. The shit sucked. Do you know how much shit I have to deal with? <laughs> the shit sucked. Ah! And you got raw down. <laughs>